Beloved in Christ, we serve one who mends what is broken. So in this time of brokenness and of isolation, in a time of estrangement, where is our God? Where our God is in the presence of the sick and the hurting. Beloved, we love one who provides for us in every wilderness. So where is our God? Well, our God is in the song sung together across balconies and empty street corners. Our God is in the smiles of Chinese emergency workers removing their masks for the first time in weeks. Our God is in breaths of fresh air. Beloved, we pray to the one who draws near to us even in the midst of social distance. So where is our God? For our God is hidden in the kindness of a community who cares for the vulnerable, a community that gathers around televisions and laptops and cell phones to worship and to praise together. Our God is in the voices of the joyous who will not fall victim to despair. Beloved, our God is here, even now, mending what is broken. And yes, there is fear, but there does not have to be hate. Yes, there is isolation, but there does not have to be loneliness. Yes, there is even death, But there is a love that is stronger even than the grave. For we are resurrection people, and we are the caretakers of God's peace on this earth. We are called to care and to be cared for. Let us pray together for our world. As we enter into a time of prayer, I would like to draw our thoughts and our hearts to the family of Norma Babbitt, who passed away recently. Her funeral arrangements are still pending. Let us commit ourselves, body and tithe, to God's care. Would you join with me in prayer? Most merciful one, anxious people as we are, we come to you, our rock, our security, our caretaker. For these are anxious and uncertain times, times of sickness, of fear. And as the sorrows of our hearts and our minds increase, we ask you to save us from trouble, to cast away all works of darkness in ourselves and in our world, to grow deep within us wells of peace and of love, to grow deep within us spaces for others to occupy, to draw us out of ourselves, to love those who are around us, to care for the needy. For God, you are indeed our stronghold, our sure defense, And so we trust ourselves to your abiding presence. But God, we pray for all those who are sick, for all those who have died. Receive them into the tender arms of your mercy and grant them peace. Lord, hover over the families of those who now grieve. We pray for those who are at especially high risk of infection, the elderly, those who have underlying illnesses, the marginalized, the poor, the imprisoned. God, in these coming days, keep them healthy and free from sickness. God, we pray for our emergency responders, for those who donate all of their time to the well-being of others, for hospitals, for doctors and nurses and surgeons and staffs. God, protect them as they minister to the sick. 
relieve them of stress and provide them resources and space to meet the needs of all those who are infirmed. God, we pray for our nation, for our leaders, for those for whom the coming days and weeks and months will draw us into uncertainty and anxiety around resources and our financial well-being. God, provide for those who will not be able to provide for themselves. Prepare your church to go beyond its walls to meet these needs. And now, we draw all of these, our prayers, together, tethering them to the most holy, the most precious prayer that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the, king, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.